My name is Dr. Stephen Kemodo Karanja. I am a practicing consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. I work at the Upper Hill Medical Center, third floor. I am also the current chairman of the Kenya Catholic Doctors Association. I had been requested and accepted, honored to be able to discuss with you today about the untold stories of contraceptives. And as the problem is being sorted with the host, I think we can go on and be covering what we can cover before the host can uh, come back on the set and be able to guide us on how to go. Now, let's start by why we wanted to talk today and told the stories of contraceptives. I want to say that contraceptives by definition mean anything that would stop conception. In fact, contraception is made of two words. One is contra, the other one is conception. When you look at everything available that has been given this name of contraceptives, it is very clear that except barriers, those barriers that may work, but every other thing in what is called contraception actually belongs to a bigger group, a, a bigger group of gadgets and medications that are used for birth control. And I think that should be the correct name, birth control gadgets. And these birth control gadgets actually are four main groups. The first group are those gadgets that are placed into inside the womb of a female. These are therefore called intrauterine devices. Sometimes you see some cheeky people calling them intrauterine contraceptive, uh, contraceptive uh, devices. They are not contraceptive devices. They are intrauterine devices, IUDs. A lot of people call them coils, but that is the first group of these gadgets of birth control. The second group is, the, is, a, is a large group called the hormones. The third group is a group that has been used for a long, long time by, vet by veterinary doctors. Um, it is called sterilization. When they sterilize or castrate uh, the, the animals in the fields, in the farms, the veterinary people have used this for a long time. But now for some years, maybe going to around 100 years, slightly more than 100 years, human beings have joined this veterinary service and it is called sterilization. Some people call it tubal ligation. It can be tubal damage. It can be tubal interference. But the whole thing is that it's affecting the fallopian tubes such that somebody cannot be able to conceive. Then the fourth and the last group is the group of the true contraceptives. These are the barriers. Barriers are very famous for not being able to work properly. But when they do, then they would be contraceptive. Today, I want us to start our discussion and focus very clearly on the intrauterine devices. These 
are old, old devices. And especially from the days of slave trade, and especially the slavery that took place, the slaves that went to the Americas, both North, South, and the islands around. During that time, the doctors of that time, and especially one of them, whose notoriety, who is a very notorious doctor, he was called Dr. Sims, did a lot of work in asking themselves whether if they placed something into the womb of a woman, whether that woman could carry a baby. And they did that with various things, with the pieces of wires, with the coils of wires, with a lot of things. And they found that if they placed something in the womb, that a woman was not able to carry a baby. Currently, we have about, we have these coils in various shapes and sizes with various other additives. The commonest one previously was called the Lippes loop, which actually was in the form of a coil of a plastic with a nylon thread tied on one, on one side. And especially in the third world and this country, it was used very, very, very much. And there was no any other thing. I remember when we were young doctors, we used to read in books that in developed countries, there were coils and those coils had copper, but we were reading about them in this country. There were coils only that were made of a plastic and a nylon together. That is the Lippes loop. And then in the 19, late 1970s and especially 80s, the coils, intrauterine devices, were banned in the first world. They were banned first in America and then in Europe. And therefore, all the copper devices that had been made had no market. But remember, you could not use the devices, the intrauterine devices amongst human beings. But as we shall see as we continue, there are other creatures in medicine of that time and the medicine of today in terms of birth control that considers that black people here and outside here in Africa and including in this country, are not really human. Things that cannot be used in human beings can still be used for research amongst monkeys, other primates, and also black women. They are considered in the same class by these hateful people who, who could burn it in their countries, but one did not burn it in Africa or here in Kenya. So, when the Lippes loop, which was very cheap, they then, and they had this backlog of millions of doses of, um, of, of copper devices, they were brought to Africa. And this is the main device now that is available in Africa, that is being put in Africa. The intrauterine device with the copper or copper containing coils. The third group is that nowadays, again, for some years now, maybe 10, 15 years, they have started putting a hormone on coils. And this hormone is one elastic tube containing the hormone levonorgestrel, which is put on the long arm of the coil, and it is called Mirena. It is an expensive coil that is also available. I think it is available in this country. It must be available as well. So these are coils. And because I don't want us to come back to them again, I would want everyone to understand what the topic of today's discussion is, the untold stories about coils. Maybe you did not know that they were tested initially on subhuman creatures who are the slaves in the Americas? And I want to ask every African especially, and every black person
person all over the world and every poor person all over the world that don't have pity on yourself that other people think that you are not human and therefore you either prove you are human or just keep I want to apologize, I had not put off my telephone. It is not going to run again. I'm not very good with the technology. Uh, as you can see, I've been working for some time. This technology came and found me and I did not know it was useful. Now I know it is the most important thing to be able to uh, deal with the technology. And here we are talking with you wherever you are using technology on issues like this. So how you had never been told about that, about the origins of this, about the testing of this, about the trying of this. After it was found it could work, it was introduced even amongst human beings, meaning the white races. But because of the complications of this, the company that used to manufacture coils was sealed by groups of people in what is called mass action among, uh, against, against a company that produces things that injure people till the manufacturers of those gadgets removed them from Americas and the first world, but they continued here. So that is the coil, a bit of history. What is the mechanism of action? How does it work? I have told you, it is formed of two parts. A part in the form of a coil or a T with copper or without copper or with hormone levonorgestrel in Mirena that is placed in the womb of a woman. It also has two strings of nylon that hangs attached from the from that that gadget and hangs into the bath canal these nylon strings have two purposes purpose number one is for the lady for the woman who is wearing it to monthly or maybe after 10 days after the periods to insert her fingers into her reproductive system and when she feels these strings, then she knows that it is still inside her body. Number two is when the time comes for removal of the coil, these are held by whoever is removing it and is pulled out and then it comes out. That is how it is made. How does it work? Now I want here for everybody to understand because there is a lot of confusion out there, but it is not really confusion. It is the wrong knowledge that has been given to people, the misinformation that has always existed with the coils about how it works. Write it down in your notes that the coil, 100% of its mechanism of action is by causing early abortion. It causes early abortion by preventing implantation. It is important for everybody to know that babies are not made in the uterus. Fertilization takes place outside in the, at the end of the fallopian tubes where the fallopian tubes become a bit wider, that part of the fallopian tube is called the ampulla. The ampulla has finger-like projections called fimbria that are used to pick up the egg from the surface of the ovary at, at, at ovulation. Because, because the ovary is outside and ovulation therefore takes place from this on the surface of the ovary and that egg remember is microscopic and it cannot jump into the fallopian tube it must be looked for using 
chemotaxis and other things that only God knows for the fallopian tube to look for that egg and pick it. Another thing you need to know from here, the human egg from when ovulation takes place, it can only be fertilized for the first, during the first 18 hours. It is important to understand that the human egg after fertilization leaves for a maximum of 24 hours, then it is absorbed by the body. A lot of people sometimes confuse and think that the menstrual period is related is the egg when it breaks down then that is the that's the menstrual period no the egg of a human being is microscopic and because it is microscopic it can't break down and create amount of blood that you can see it actually after being picked by the fallopian tube the small fingers the fibria it is brought to the widest part of the tube which is called the ampulla and therefore this is where the male sits this is where this egg will be found by the sperms and this is where fertilization will take place depending on the length of the fallopian tube and this depends on the lineage of the woman some ladies have fallopian tubes that are about 8 centimeters, 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, or even up to 20 centimeters, the length of fallopian tubes. Therefore, when the baby is manufactured, when the baby is created, when the baby is formed at fertilization, in the ampulla of the fallopian tubes, then it will go through the most dangerous journey that all of us went through, the journey from the ampulla of the tube into the womb where we all grew. This journey, depending on the length of the fallopian tube, will take about five days, six days, and up to ten days, and then the baby will arrive in the cavity of the womb. For those people who are, it is important to know that therefore, if the fallopian tube has any narrowed place, which will allow the sperms to pass through and meet the egg and fertilize it, and therefore the baby will be formed, that during the journey of coming back, now you have a zygote, you have a little baby, going towards the womb where it will implant and grow. Sometimes then it reaches this narrow place and it is stuck there. And when it is stuck there, it starts growing there. And in a month or two, it will burst that fallopian tube and there will be massive bleeding if nothing is done. This is the disease that we call ectopic pregnancy. I have heard often some people who are really not very honest and for their own reasons and purposes saying that this is a pregnancy that can be talked about in terms of abortions. No, this is a disease. An ectopic pregnancy is a disease of a stuck baby at a narrow part of the fallopian tube where the baby starts growing. Nowadays, sometimes we are able to find them before they bust. But in some cases, they bust and we know when the woman then has pain and becomes weak and she's bleeding internally and she's brought to us, that is when now we know she has an ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy is a life and death disease for the mother and always 100% for the baby. In areas that are very far, very far from, ed, every, from a medical facility, when a woman gets this, an ectopic pregnancy, a lot of ladies can die from this. But there is something that God has made possible. 
that even a, if a woman is extremely sick and very, very weak, immediately you are able to get into that abdomen. It's an operation. You get into that abdomen and tie the bleeding part, then you can be able to help the mother to resuscitate them. And they always do very, very well after that. I wanted you to know that because some, sometimes we are not very sure about what happens and what ectopic pregnancy is. And sometimes people think that the babies are made inside the womb. It is not. Babies are not made inside the womb. And therefore, when the coil is sitting near inside the womb, remember it is a foreign body and the body does not like foreigners sitting inside them. It is starts becoming sick. It becomes inflamed. It become, it, you, a woman who has a coil develops low grade, sometimes high grade endometritis. Inflammation in the womb causes the production of very huge, very huge cells called macrophages, which will destroy the baby. Number two, this lining is no longer the endometrial cavity where the baby should implant is made completely very is made important. Com now i can hear you I can. I can hear the sound from you maybe i continue when you when, when you're ready so it is important please understand this that the coil makes the inside of the womb where the baby should be implanted become like a poisoned field is poisoned with okay. animals or macrophages which then destroy the little babies and prevent the little baby from implanting and number three for them to be for for the coil to be able to become extremely effective extremely dangerous copper has been added and when copper is added copper is extremely dangerous poison is cytotoxic is cardiotoxic there is no baby who will be likely to survive both the bullet and then the grenade at the same time they work together to get together with the effect of the coil and then line the womb the whole womb with the copper atoms so that it will make sure that the babies die i say this and i want this to be clear that anybody who is having a coil out there they know that it is not every month that a woman conceives whether she, she, she's using it or not using it but if you are using it wherever you conceive and you always conceive because the coil can never stop the sperm from its journey towards looking for the egg number two ovulation is taking place very far away in the ovary and fertilization will take place very far away again in the fallopian tubal ampulla and therefore the coil cannot interfere with fertilization and therefore when you say when i say that the coil works only by causing abortions i do this with all the medical authority that i can have and i do have that because i am extremely well informed in this field that is the mechanism of action causing abortions but then let us go to the third important thing what are the benefits to the mother the only benefit is that she put it there so that she could cause abortions and not carry the baby most of the ladies who are wearing coils they think they put it there so that they can stop conception wrong that is misinformation that is a wrong knowledge again you have been 
you have you you've been hard. That's what the what the, the English people would say. You've been hard. You've been cooked. You've been put in a box and closed and told you can believe that. Now, the, the you now you know the untold story about how the coil works. It works by killing your babies. It works by converting you into a perpetual abortionist. It is something that you need to know so that you can make your own decision whether you would want to be what you were misinformed and become or you can change. My advice is this, remove the damn coil. You are like a creature of God. The little baby is a creature of God. We all started there and therefore do not, do not soil your hands with the innocent blood. Now, the mother thought that she had it so that she does not conceive, although she, we now know that she always conceives. What she doesn't do is to carry the pregnancy. But she thinks, therefore, that the coil is helping her because she does not see the dead baby because it happens when the baby is very young. What, are, what is the price? What are the side effects of the coil? Number one, it causes painful periods, dysmenorrhea. It causes these by causing cramping. The womb is a very protective organ. It does not allow things loitering and sitting there without doing anything useful inside them. And therefore, they are always trying to remove it. And especially during menstruation, the cramping becomes very much. And that is why the, pay, the, the, the periods become very painful when you are wearing the coil. Number two, the coil induces a condition called endometriosis interna, or sometimes, most of the time, called adenomyosis because the coil injures the basement layer of the lining of the womb called endometrium. When this layer becomes damaged, then some cells of the endometrium enter the womb, enter the muscle of the womb called myometrium. And therefore, during periods, you start bleeding also inside the myometrium in small bits, but it becomes very, very painful. So dysmenorrhea, painful periods, come because of number one, the cramping, and number two, because of adenomyosis. Number three, it causes menorrhagia. Menorrhagia is heavy periods. Heavy periods either in the, in, the, in, the, in the amount you bleed and also the number of days you bleed. If you are bleeding for three days, you start bleeding for four days. If you are bleeding 20 or 30 cc, you start bleeding 40 or 50 cc. And that is why a lot of ladies who use the coil as their method of birth control ultimately get anemia. Excuse me. So, menorrhagia, metrolegia, or lengthening of the days or periods, dysmenorrhea, painful periods, then 90 to 98 percent of all the women who are using the coil always have infections. They have infections such that they repeatedly have discharges from the birth canal, a discharge of many colors, sometimes yellowish, sometimes going to greenish, sometimes the, these discharges 
cause smell, false smelling. And a lot of them, because they get a lot of fungal infection, a lot of thrush, there is a lot of itching. For this reason, therefore, every time when they start getting this infection and nobody will tell them how to deal with it, they keep treating and it comes back, they get treated and it comes back, it becomes a major nightmare. But this infection that causes discharge, if only it is stopped there, maybe somebody could say, if you, if you make your bed, lie on it. But there is a grave danger because of this infection, because of blocking of the tubes. For those gynecologists like myself who are practicing in Africa now, have seen that have seen the emergence of a new thing that was not there before but in the last 20 to 25 years it is gradually increasing it is infertility inability of mothers who wish to have children can't have them and when you investigate in you investigate them more and more of them have blocked tubes so where are these blocked tubes coming from? For the people who are wearing the coil, from when you go for it, you should be informed that you should have made up your mind that you do not want, you, you, you may not want any other child. The coil, and here again, I want you to write it down so that you don't forget. The coil should never be inserted in anybody who has three, who has less than three children. Repeat, less than three children. Why? Because the main complication, the greatest complication, the most dangerous complication of the coil is blocking the fallopian tubes. Blocked fallopian tubes causes infertility. Now, for those of you who may be outside Africa, maybe you have other things you can think about, but I tell you, by and large in Africa, including in this country, if a lady is infertile, the stigmatization, the social stress, the family conflict in marriage, in the wider family, amongst friends, is a total nightmare. Nobody in Africa especially, in this country in particular, has the right to insert a coil to a woman who has less than three children. Because in a way, you want to slowly sterilize her. So, blocking of the tubes the coil can perforate the uterus and get lost out there in the peritoneal cavity amongst the intestines. It can be stuck inside the wall of the uterus. It can perforate uh, through the cervix. It is a gadget like they did in the West. In late 70s and early 80s, it should be banned. This thing is not fit for human beings, but I can tell you that I have seen schoolgirls who have been inserted by this thing, either by medical people or by nurses. Why do they insert them? They insert them for two reasons. Number one, it is a business. They are paid by the owners of these things by the number they introduce. And therefore, if you are anywhere and you know how to do it, the more you insert, the better money you make some of the medical people, they will insert it and charge the patients and therefore they don't care whether you have a child, where you are, whether you are in school, in what, but I can tell you, if you insert it in those, in those girls who are in school, in those girls who are not married, in those mothers who, who don't have a baby, that they want to, have, to enjoy their life before they have their first baby. It is a criminal thing you are doing. It should, it should not be done. And for you, especially in Africa, please hear me. I'm telling you this. Do not put coils in women 
who are who have less than three children should you put in those in those who are above who have children above uh, above three i tell you no you can't put coil in human beings but since you are going to do it anyway if you are one of the people who do it do not attempt to do it there are limits to what you are evil there are limits to what you are disagreeable practice disagreeable behavior can be pulled to do not destroy women do not cause more violation to the girls and the women of africa and for you remember these things are not made in this country they are not made in africa these things come from the western world where it is banned it is built for research it is built for use in subhuman creatures like the black women who are our mothers our wives our daughters our children the mothers of africa the women of africa that every one of us in which profession you are you have a duty to protect them because they are the bearers of our tomorrow this is about the iud's the one with the hormone mirena needs a little small addition number one the hormone it contains is called levonorgestrel levonorgestrel is the modern and extremely powerful progesterone now this merano this levonorgestrel when it is put inside this bigger limb of the coil then it releases this progesterone into the uterus all the time and therefore making the uterus the lining of the womb the endometrium thinner and thinner it also makes the birth canal become atrophic and thin and just like with the coil one of the other things it gives the mother is painful pain it, it, we call it dyspyunia dyspyunia is painful sex when this woman meets with her spouse then she has pain and because she has pains it is as eating on the roots of her own marriage it is one of the greatest the coil is one of the greatest marriage breakers in africa and again i appeal i appeal to all of you you sons and daughters of africa who have gone to school that go out of your way to advise that we must stop this thing in africa it was banned in the americas it was banned in europe it is given to school children in this on this continent the continent that is the future of mankind and we allow it and god has allowed us to go through some form of education we understand and especially you ladies please be the agents of life stop this thing from here i would wish to go on to the next group of contraceptives and this next group of contraceptives is the most widespread is called hormones these hormones what are they because they are two estrogen and progesterone and how do they work and why have they become very very important it is important to have to put your foot on the ground of biology to understand what you're dealing with when a baby girl is conceived in her mother's womb this girl is given all the eggs that she will ever have throughout her life these are called primordial follicles and on average all girls from where anywhere in the world have 2.5 million primordial follicles when they are formed in the womb of their mother it is important to understand that because if you ever do anything to a girl to a woman that 
injures her eggs, it injures all of them because unlike men who manufacture the sperms throughout their life, depending on their health, women cannot manufacture eggs. They are given ready-made eggs at conception, 2.5 million of them, and they are carried in this bag, this bag called the ovary. Now, by the nine months that girls stay in their mother's womb, by the time they are born, they have already actually destroyed the mother's hormones, especially progesterone, which carries the child already destroys one million of these eggs so that at birth, most girls on average will have 1.5 million eggs. Those eggs will never cease to work for one day throughout her life. And therefore, from when she's born to when she enters puberty, continuous growth and attrition of these ovaries make her that by the time she reaches puberty, another million of her primordial follicles are already finished. And at puberty, she has half a million eggs, and she started with 2.5 million eggs, which she has now to work with throughout her reproductive life till when they cannot be stimulated again and she enters into menopause. When the egg, therefore, at puberty, start working, when the key, ignition key is put on by the maker of things, through messages that come from the brain, from the higher centers, celebrum, and then into the, into, into the lower brain, into the, into, 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 the, into the thalamus and the hypothalamus, and then this little, the little master gland called the pituitary gland, which controls everything. That gland, ordered from the higher centers, then sends orders to the to the, to, to the primordial follicles. Now you start growing. And those orders are sent through a hormone called follicle-stimulating hormone. When that hormone in the bloodstream hits the primordial, hits the ovary, the primordial four to five, sometimes up to eight primordial follicles respond and they start growing. By day five, one dominant one kills the rest and it becomes the dominant follicle. This follicle, as the egg is growing in the body of the girl, it mainly produces one hormone called estrogen. Apart from the other minor hormones, but the main hormone it produces is estrogen. Estrogen is the girl hormone. It is the hormone that transforms that girl child who looks like a boy before she reaches puberty and then suddenly molding of her body takes place and she becomes this wonderful beautiful creature this bella bella we see these girls we see these mothers we have these ladies are made like that by by a contractor called estrogen estrogen is the one that deals with the fat deposition with the molding a girl with the growth of secondary sexual characteristics with the breasts and everything and the wonderful calves is actually because of these eggs when they start growing start releasing this hormone now when the egg is so now you know where we get the hormone estrogen because when the egg is released from the from the follicle and that we call ovulation the shell of that egg is called the corpus luteum the yellow body it becomes another gland another gland because when the egg leaves the body thinks it is going to become a baby this one starts producing the second hormone this second hormone, which sustains that baby and which actually carries the baby for nine months, is called progesterone. Progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum, by the yellow body. Now, something about the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is species specific for all human 
females, it lives for between 12 and 16 days for an average of 14 days. And therefore, after 14 days, if the baby has not started talking, the corpus luteum will die. Lysis will take place, and therefore, the bed that had been made to receive the baby in implantation, this bed is unmade, and that is menstruation. So menstruation is not a breaking egg. In fact, menstruation happens 14 days on average from when the egg was released. That is in fact the unmaking of the bed, removing the linen again so that another gender can, can come. I have gone to a bit of this detail so that you can understand when the gadgets for birth control have been made, why they have picked on these two crucial hormones that run the body of the, of, the, of the woman from when she enters puberty to when she enters menopause. Estrogen is the anabolic one, is the one for growth. Progesterone is the one for maturation. Now using these two hormones together in various combinations, then you have the combined pill, the pill you see for 21 days, because these hormones can be taken as sweets, as tablets that you swallow. Those are the pills. They can be injected in the form of an injection. They can be put in the form of something on your on, on, under your skin, the implants, and they can as well, we have seen them being put also on the coil. So the tablets you see, most of the ones that you see that are given to women who are not breastfeeding, these are combination of estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen nikali sana. Estrogen is very powerful. Estrogen is very dangerous. So it is in very low levels. Mainly it is the progesterone hormone that forms even the combined pill. So, there is no pill, there is no contraceptive in the hormonal contraceptive, which is composed of estrogen alone. Estrogen at present in Africa, including in this country, is used in a, the, the, the combined pill is used by about 20% of those people using hormonal contraceptives. What is used mainly are hormonal preparations of one single hormone, the progesterone. And this progesterone sometimes is made into small tablets, which are 35 in number, put together called microlute and are given to mothers. It is also made into a giant, giant, like a demonic, main demonic tablet, pill, called the P2, the morning after pill. The morning after pill, some people even call them emergency contraceptives, is a frightening pill. It looks small, but I promise you, it is a giant, I'm going to tell you about it. It is also a single hormone. It is levonorgestrel. It's a progesterone. The smaller one, the 35 one, are levonorgestrel. If you have no plant implanted in your heart, it's levonorgestrel. Whatever the name they give the implant you are using is levonorgestrel. They are all purely progesterones. They are the main ones that are being used amongst people now, both in pregnancy and outside pregnancy. And I want to start with that small one, the 35 ones, it's called microlute. Because in a way it is a very, very, it is maybe one of the most dangerous of all the hormonal pills that I know. Stop press. These things we are talking about today, contraceptives, 
but control gadgets. They have nothing to do with medicine. Repeat, they are not medical gadgets. They are birth control gadgets. Even in this backward country of ours, so to speak, could never allow them into any health facility up to 1985. Before 1985, they were not allowed here. They were not allowed in any health facility. They had their own kiosks where they were sold. They were called family planning clinics. Family planning clinics. But in 1985, something great happened for the industry that sells them. They came and talked to our leaders and told our leaders this, can you allow us to teach people in your health facilities about spacing their children? And for that, we shall give you free vaccination of six vaccines. Those vaccines include the polio vaccine, the DPT, which has three. Then you have the BCG that they use for tuberculosis. And then you have the measles vaccine. And even that time, as they were being told about DPT, they were not or they did not even want to check because any, any casual checkup would have shown them that, that, uh, that DPT had been banned in the Western world. You can't even today, even that time, 1985, even before 1985, you could not use, you could not use a DPT on human children. But remember, I am talking about human children when I'm talking about the USA, I'm talking about Europe, I'm talking about human children. And I talk about that with a lot of irritation because I am human. My children are human. My grandchildren are human. But these people who manufacture these things of death consider that my people, your people, are not really human and therefore it was one of the gifts given to our government so that it could allow birth control proponents to enter into our hospitals. For those who were there at that time, I was still a doctor. Can you remember something happened? What we used to call MCH, maternal child health, had a dash and then FP inside at the end, MCHFP. That thing is a, 19, is a 1985 thing. Before that time, it was not there. So this hormone, the small one, from when now they entered that place, they say that this hormone may be used by breastfeeding women that it does not affect the production of milk, the microlute. It has a levonorgestrel, 0 0.03 milligrams. And it is true, it does not affect production of breast milk, but they did not give the, the other thing, that all progestogens, including microlute, always come out of the breast milk. And the studies that were started and is stopped by them, studies that have been done by people who don't agree with them have shown that a lot of progesterone, levonorgestrone, leaves the mother through the breast milk and Hello. it is followed by the child. Do you want to talk, sir? May I continue then when you are ready, you will let me know. And I want, this is where I want you to understand. The levonorgestrel taken by a mother who is breastfeeding, that it is... Sorry, I was just saying... Yes. Can't hear you. Uh, I wanted to say that for those who have the questions, you'll, 
you will respond to their questions later after the session. Thank you. Just proceed. Go ahead. Thank you. Now, levonorgestrel in my chloriot, my chloriot given to breastfeeding mothers. The levonorgestrel gets out of the milk of the mother and gets into the baby. The baby is being fed poisoned milk. If they are baby girls, their own reproduction, their own eggs start being poisoned by the feeding. No wonder more than 30% of African girls, sometimes 40%, from mothers who took contraceptives, from mothers who took those tablets, microdot, or had the injection of Depo Provera, or had other contraceptive injections, who took progestogens during breastfeeding, they affected the eggs of their daughters and therefore their daughters have irregular periods. They have polycystic ovarian diseases. They have problems when they grow up of having children because they have irregular periods, very poor ovulation, partial ovarian dysfunction, partial ovarian failure. All of it caused deliberately by evil people who gave her mother contraceptives when she was breastfeeding. If you hear me out there, and you know somebody who is using any of those pills or injections and she is breastfeeding, or you yourself are doing the same, please stop today, stop two things. Either stop the child from taking poisoned milk that you are dispensing to the child, or stop using that injection, that poison you should not be using and breastfeeding at the same time. If there are girls, they are affected with their reproduction for the rest of their life. And if there are boys, well, then you have the problem now we are seeing in gynecology and in andrology. Before these, before 100 years ago, even as present day, Africa was a continent where polygamy was a main thing. And one man had five wives, 10 wives, and he had children with them. The modern man, most of the time, born of women who took contraception are said to have low sperm count, abnormal sperms. They cannot even be able to have children. They have effects on their libido. Their libido is down. By the time they are 25, 30 years, when they are supposed to be at the peak, of their manhood, when they are supposed to be flaming swords, flaming spears, they are already taking Viagra because they can't rise up to the occasion because they have been injured seriously. These children, sometimes we, the, now these boys, who cannot rise to the occasion, who are unable to have children because they have no libido, they can't get proper arousal, proper erections, because their systems were, dim were damaged by their mothers while they were breastfeeding are now living in the same age like their own fathers. Because woe to you, man, if your wife is taking these things. Because when a woman is taking these hormones, the husband finally becomes affected and the first thing to go for him is libido, the urge to have sexual relations. And number two, the urge to have normal erections. Number three, performance goes down. This is the curse of the modern Africa husband, modern Africa man with his sons and daughters all of it dispensed by International Planned Parenthood Federation, an organization started some time ago in America by a lady who in all fairness must be considered a witch. She was called Margaret Sanga. And she started these gadgetries. She started and financed production of these hormones.
her legacy still goes on. The destruction of the man of Africa, of the man of tomorrow is taking place even today from this tablet. For this reason, I really wanted to mention this tablet because it is very important. These hormones, progesterones, that are given to women when they are breastfeeding, breastfeeding women wherever you are, listen to me carefully, because I know what I'm talking about, that you may not, just like our great, great grandmothers and our own mothers did, you may not conceive for over two years or three years if you understand how to use breastfeeding for nutrition of your baby and also for spacing your next child. But that is the talk of the other day we shall be here with you. But one of the things you have to make up your mind, if you have to take, if you have to take contraceptives, then do not breastfeed. Let your child take something else. Let that child miss a lot of things from what they are entitled to in your breast milk. But let that child grow up to be a normal man, to be a normal girl, to be a woman who will have her own children and to be a man who will be able to have his own children. I want to mention about one other flagship, flagship pill that is now the nightmare of human beings here in Africa and also down there in the first world. It is called the morning after pill. It is also called some people, you know, the crazy World Health Organization is calling it an um, uh, emergency, a contra, emergency contraception, but the WHO is crazy and we know that. So when it says that, we shouldn't be very, very much worried about it. That tablet, the morning after pill, I want to introduce you to it so that you know it. So that when you find it walking on the road, you know who it is. That pill contains levonorgestrel, 0 0.75 milligrams. Listen again, 0 0.75 milligrams. The normal pill is has 0 0.03 milligrams. Therefore, to make one P2, to make one morning after pill, to make one emergency contraceptive, you need 25 tablets of my chlorine. And indeed, they are exactly the same. So if you have been taking one, you can take 25 of the other one. And you have to take two of these in 24 hours, which means you are taking 50 tablets. And you have no idea what you are taking. And that is why this program is here today, to tell you that you are taking an equivalent of 25 micro tablets in one day. I promise you, you give this even to an elephant and you are going to injure something in it. When you give it, to a school girl, to a girl who is not even fully sexually mature. Her organs have not mature, and you're giving them. When a country, and especially a country that considers itself progressive in Africa, like Kenya, because of greed, because of corruption, because of evil, allows our children to partake of this thing, allows our women, allows this thing to enter our borders, then you are seeing the greatest failure you can ever see in Africa. Politics don't bring failure per se. What brings failure is greed, corruption, nepotism. That is the destruction of this country, the destruction of other countries in Africa. Those three key words, corruption, nepotism, and greed because how can an independent country allow poison to be brought into the country and even when it gets here rather than take it and burn it and throw it away it actually allows its own children to be given even without prescription because in kenya here if you want to access p2 Emergency contraceptive, you do not need a prescription. You can go to any chemist. And I can also promise you, I have yet to find any chemist in this country which is owned by children. They are all owned.
by fathers, by mothers, by people who are adults, by professionals. But greed seems to be genetic in this country. And if it is not you who owns a pharmacy, you who goes to a pharmacy, where these things are dispensed, when will you ever pick the courage to say that enough is enough, that these we must remove from our community, from our country, that we cannot allow this drug to be given. Now, this drug, morning after pill, World Health Organization and its poisons calls it emergency contraception. What does it, let me give you a bit history about it, because it is important that you know why it makes me a bit, just slightly agitated. This drug actually before was being called RU486. RU486 is a Ruzel Oclaf 200 number 286, 486, 486. Ruzel Uclaf makes tablets that kill people suddenly because the mechanism of action of the morning after pill, again, is 100% is to kill the baby. You do not take it before you have sex because it is not supposed to prevent conception. You are supposed to take it the day after or two days. Nowadays I hear even after five days because the aim is to kill the baby if your sexual encounter led to conception of a baby. That is how it works and it affects whoever takes it for the rest of your life. You can imagine taking 50 tablets in one day, and I want to bet with any of you that for those ladies who have taken more than five doses of P2 in their life, watch this space. If within eight to 15 years, you have not developed either cancer of the breast or cancer of the ovary or cancer of the cervix you come to me because i'll still be on this table here and i'll buy you mandazi and chai and i promise you i keep my word if you ever touch this p2 tablet you are playing with the death my people would tell you, you don't play games with that tablet. If you are an adult who sells these things, even if you are going to become poor, throw them away. If you know somebody, your friend, who sells these tablets of death, which kill babies, destroy their mothers, now and in the future, please ask them to throw them away. If the government can not do that, then we can do that ourselves. And I count on you to go out there and say, P2 must leave this country. Morning after peel must leave this country. And for these, our daughters, these, our wives, these, our mothers who are taking them, to know that it does not only give you cancer, it is going to give you high blood pressure. It's going to play games with your heart. It's going to affect your blood vessels and give you cholesterol is going to destroy your kidney is going to affect your liver is going to affect your clotting factors and you are going to have repeated clotting repeated dvt it is a nightmare it is going to affect who you are as a woman it is going to affect your skin the smooth skin that you had is going to go you're going to look with more pimples, with the acne, is going to pull out your hair in patches. It is you're going to have alopecia areata, alopecia subtotalis, alopecia totalis. That is removal in bits of your hair. And I have seen so many ladies, but nowadays you wear things on your head that people think you have hair and you do not have hair. It has been eaten by one of these poisons.
when you wear this thing, when you swallow this thing, and it affects your skin like this, then do not wonder and worry very much where, why your husband is not interested very much in you. By nature, men can pick, even in the dark, women who are on contraception. And especially when they are on pro progesterone, they emit a special smell. The smell of a dead something. The smell of latent, hidden death. Women with contraception are the greatest repelling agents on their own husbands. Their marriage is in problems. A woman really is so important. I do not personally believe that God made something, has created anything which can be compared to a woman. Women are special. Without them, none of us would be here. God, in his, his own wisdom, created only two. And he was so tired, he's not started creating again. Now, he recruits a man and a woman and, as, and women to carry babies. Every baby you see in this world is not that original and created by God, has been carried and made and carried by women. And that is why women are special. And that is why when somebody sees them, you respect them, you support them, you help them. You spoil them. You give them what they want. You buy them good things. You surround them with protection because there is something special. I know some of them become sick, like Margaret Sanga was demonic, but she was satanic in her mind. Others like Mary Stops, but 99.9% .9 of all women are something every creation and especially men must go out of their way to respect in a very very special way but these women in their own marriage are slowly taken and controlled by these by these drugs and especially p2 these drugs that you take 50 tablets in one day and they destroy their own marriage their husbands goes away. You go to places where they watch football in the middle of the night and meet men in their 30s, their 40s, when their marriage is young, when you would expect them to be at home singing hallelujah, but they are screaming in the middle of the night about football and teams, which one, I don't know those, those, those EPL things. Why? Because they don't want to go home. Why? Because they... They do not want their body to touch the, uh, the body of their wife. Why? Because the body of their wife makes them get goosebumps. Why? Because she's on contraception. Men understand when their wives take contraception. The woman changes completely from her hair, from her face, from her skin. Everything about her changes. She becomes rude. She becomes difficult. She becomes impatient. She, becomes, she develops anxiety. A lot of them become, become depressed. She becomes really a very lonely human being. And she does not know what is happening to her. And men, therefore, hide away from them. They come home hoping that she will be asleep so that he can coil himself somewhere and sleep. And she may not, uh, she may not, he may not be expected to, 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 have, to have marital activity. These things have destroyed so many marriages in Africa. And men, when I see them there, young, and when those places close, they start get into instantaneous prayers. God help my car to have a puncture because they don't want to go home because their wife is con contraception. I think every man should take himself and form into groups and go around those places and pick those contraceptives and throw them down latrines because that's where they belong because they will destroy, they have destroyed our families, but we are still early, we still have time, we still have a lot of girl children growing up. We have a lot of ladies who have never touched them. In this country, we still have millions of ladies who have never been touched on them. We must protect them from this poison. I was giving you the history of this major pill, 50%, 50, 50 tablet, two pills in a day, the morning after pill, the P2, the RU486 by Russell O'Clough, 
I want to tell you, for those who don't know, that Russell O'Clough was created, was the company that made the Zyklon B gas that Hitler and his Nazis used to kill the Jews. Faben, Faben, IG Faben was the original name of, of, of RU, of Russell O'Clough. They changed their name after the Nuremberg trials because they did not want to be known. But you can see, we can still see their genetic makeup because they are still the makers of another tablet which does not do anything except kill. That is RU486, morning after pill, emergency contraceptive, Faben, Faben, Hitler, and Germany. But Hitler, why, why, why is everybody feels get very, very, very shocked with Hitler? Hitler actually was just used as you are being used now. There is a group beyond Hitler. That group is called the group of eugenics. Eugenics is a term that was created by a professor called Sir Francis Galton in 1884. In 1884, Sir Francis Galton suddenly discovered that God did not create all men the same. He made some superior and some inferior. The superior ones were white. They were, there were some who were parasitical in the middle. They were brown like Jews, like the people in the in the in the in the, 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 in the east of the in the in the east, the eastern side of the of the of the of the world. And then there was servants created specifically to serve other people. They were black like you and me. Black was meant, was created purposely to serve the other people according to Sir Francis Galton. But Sir Francis Galton actually was not the, the originator of the thought process of people and death and separation and killing. Before him, there was a man who was actually a pastor and he was also the exchequer the, the president of the exchequer of the of the of of of, of, um, of, of great britain and he was called robert uh, Malthus of the malthusian theory who said that production and uh, consumption must balance and he had the disciples behind him like darwin darwin actually was was inspired by Malthus when he did his animal population of the Darwinian. Remember him of the evolution, evolution and the rest. Darwin was a student, in fact, or was a student, was a mental student of Malthus. And from him then, others, the sociologists and statisticians came in. From him, of course, you go, you go to, 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 to the others, like, um, like now when you reach you reach you reach a uh, sir francis galton sir francis galton is a watershed because below him one of his students of the class he was teaching was a girl who did not finish her nursing school she was born in a family of 11 children and this girl became something that was poison this girl was called margaret sangar the group that was in the class of Sir Francis Galton is a group that started the theory of eugenics, that people are made differently. And if the world has to progress ahead, you must allow the super races to improve and you must check the reproduction of the poorer races and especially the scum that is black. You must make sure that they don't destroy them. In fact, Sir Francis Galton, in his writing, says he is convinced that poverty is genetically transmitted together with a black color, that in fact stupidity is genetically transmitted amongst the black people, and therefore they have, because of their low mentation, there is one thing that they are better than other 
people, other races, and that is reproduction. And one of the ways you can help them so that they do not become very poor is to stop them from reproducing. And number two, so that they do not become a burden to the super races, you must always make sure that you kill them, you destroy them. That is where eugenics come from. And the experiments included what they took to Germany in 1927, 28, 29. By 1930, eugenics was very well established in Germany and is what was fed up into Nazism is where the deaths of the Jews and the Germans, and there were very many Germans who were killed during that time by the eugenics, the hate, the racism that existed. Racism, because of eugenics, is the driver, is the father of contraception. Because that girl who was in the class of Sir Francis Galton is Margaret Sangal. Margaret Sangal is the one who started the first the first family planning facilities in the United in the United States in one state when it was completely illegal, she was as evil even in those days and she grew up finally to form what has become the hegemog throughout the world called International Planned Parenthood Federation. And the International Planned Parenthood Federation actually has patents, is the owner of nearly every contraceptive gadget that is in the world. In 1950s and early 60s, they are the ones, okay, they were, they were helped by some other eugenics who are in business. People like the Rockefeller Senior, Rockefeller D Senior, funded the production and research into the hormonal contraceptives. So what you see today, therefore, must not cheat you today about just the corruption, just the nepotism and greed of the African tyrants. You must know it has a long history. It is created on scientific racism. That is a total expression on social racism. That in fact, today, just like yesterday just like in 1778 1776 when malthus wrote about that essay on population and production that racism is a real and this racism is both scientific is academic is a social is even religious racism is so real that when you see somebody giving you P2, 50 tablets of microlute somewhere outside in the districts of this country, in a country where you do not have water to drink, you have contraceptives everywhere. In a country where there is no food, there is nothing. Children are hungry. Women cannot deliver in a respectable facility. But every facility you go is filled to the roof with more and more contraceptives. So this is the contraceptive history. This is the racist history of these contraceptives. And therefore, for those of us, and now I hope you who understand this thing, when you hear family planning, when you hear contraceptives, the first, the bells should start ringing in your mind, you are hearing about racism. Because I promise you, in a very short time, not today, but in a sh very short time, as we go, we will look at other ways of doing away with this evil called contraception because it should never have been in this country. Those two flagships, of the hormonal contraceptives, Michael Oriot, and the big uh, demon, the P2, would allow me to mention uh, just a, a few things because I can look at the time and see we don't have a lot of time. 
to mention about sterilization. Like I said, it is a veterinary, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a veterinary thing. You do not castrate human beings. You, you are not allowed to do that. You do not do that. Number two, you do not cultivate, you do not you do not castrate women. You do not do tube obligation in women. Because you ask yourself, why are you doing it? Because if a woman is sure she never wants to have another child, why can't she decide not to have sex? Children don't rain on you. They do not. They are not splashed on you by a passing car. Children are always made when a man and a woman meet. And because I say that a woman, and I'm saying now again, that a woman is a special creature from God, nobody should go and destroy her. Nobody should sterilize her. And for you who are married, I'm sorry you are married to men who do not know very, very much. Because for the men out there, if you are seeing me, if you are listening to me, please hear me and understand that it is the most unmanly thing that you will ever do. It is the most criminal thing you will ever do to your family if you ever allowed your wife to take contraceptives because you are now playing games with the pillar of your home because the woman, the mother, is actually the main pillar of your home. Nearly all of you, she may look small and what, and she may not even look physically strong, but believe it, you and your children basically rotate around this pillar because she's the one who nurtures everybody, including you, and you and every other person in that home, including myself. You have an obligation to protect her. You must protect her from destruction, from attack by other people. If they say that, she is, that they are doing this to help her not have a baby, you can tell her them that yes i can do that better because we can agree not to meet if by doing that we are going to injure her. every man in africa especially all of you my brothers and sisters my sons and my grandchildren men i call on you please once again rise up and be counted our families depend on you protect the family Protect the girls and the boys. Protect the mothers. And protect yourselves. Have a life in Africa. A life in ambulance. A life that God will bless at the end. And you can't do that if you still continue playing the servant of Sir Francis Galton. If you continue thinking that Sir Francis Galton was right that God created you inferior. I can tell you, because I know that to be true, that Sir Francis Galton was a racist. He was a racist and he should have been arrested and put to prison on site. As I always tell you, that because of the evil they have done, the leaders of International, of international Planned Parenthood Federation of Mary Stops, of IPAS, of this demonic international big NGOs, the bingos. The right thing for all of us to do, for a government to do, is to arrest them immediately and take them to court and put them to prison and throw away the keys until they realize that they may go back to their homes, which is the United States of America. I don't care what they do there, although I care as a human being, because I would follow them there and urge that they be arrested and imprisoned and everything they have confiscated because we can't sit and allow them to destroy mankind. We can't allow them to, to come and destroy our people. And I can tell you, I'm a doctor for a long time in this country. I have worked in the rural areas. I've been places I have seen, hospitals which have which nothing else, but every woman who comes can get an implant. And an implant costs 98,000 Kenya shillings. And if a child is dying of pneumonia, which would cost 100 shillings, pneumonia, and there is no penicillin. 
and penicillin would cost 100 shillings. There is no tablets for malaria. There are no tablets for worms. There, are, there is no water. There is nothing. But the whole hospital is full of contraceptives. But something you do not know, you ask yourself, so IPPF and the other bingos bring these contraceptives in this country and give them here for free. Don't cheat yourself. It is big business. This country has already been mortgaged, like most African countries, is mortgaged to, uh, to international loaning, loaning merchants. And part of that loan, a lot of it is to pay for these contraceptives. And the IPPF does not care whether after you pick them, they become expired. What you do with them is your problem, although they will help you more and more to give them to your children, to give them to your women, so that you can't have more children, so that you can die with the cancer. And remember, women have been walking street, these streets, some of them the most educated we have, that cancer should be made a national tragedy, a national emergency, a national disaster, and they do not ask themselves. And some of them have PhD, they have masters, they are doctors, they are lawyers, they are teachers on the street saying that cancer should be declared a national disaster and they are not ready to use the same vigor to say that the causes of these cancers of the breast, of the cervix, of the ovary, of the skin, of the body, especially in women and now in men, that the cause should be destroyed and the cause for your information is contraception because you have never been in you have never been told the greatest untold story of contraceptives is that they are a resist device used amongst uninformed misinformed groups of people especially in africa to destroy themselves and their children so that these racists can come and inherit our, our the resources that are in this country and a parting shot on this particular part is that great britain great britain all the four countries that make great britain england wales scotland northern ireland put together can feed taught four times in this country great britain is one of the countries that talks about our population being high, shame on them. While we are less than 50 million, I think we are closer to 45 million. And in a tiny country, the size of central Kenya, they have packed nearly 90 million Britain, 90 million people, great people of Great Britain. 90 million and they are not overpopulated. They are taking in immigrants and they are the size of central Kenya. Shame on us. Even with our education, we can't see simple things. A lot of you have been out there in those countries and you have seen their population density and they still are giving us AIDS. Why? Because we, have, we are sitting on our intelligence, on our brain and we must start dismantling the hate. We must start dismantling neocolonialism. We must start dismantling colonialism and racism, racism especially. And one of their greatest tools is attacking our family and you attack the family by attacking our children and our attacking our women. And now you can see how much some of us have fought. Some of you have fought them as they are trying to get in into our Senate and cheat them again through greed and, 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 and bribery and, 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 and and they want them to pass the Kihika abortion bill. And the Kihika abortion bill is meant to facilitate what I have been telling you. And so that you can eat and eat and eat more of this. You can kill and kill more of Kenyan children, Kenyan women, Kenyan family, so that we may not be strong enough to withstand as our resources are taken. From here, I would maybe suggest 
that because it is going to once 3.30, my clock is not working well, it is talking about around 4, and this was ending at 4, if there is any question that I am ready to answer them now. And because I can't hear anything, and I can't hear you, I pray really that you are hearing me. Because if I've been talking to myself all this time, I'll feel very sad tonight. Anybody out there? And if you are out there, then have a private chat and tell me you can hear me. Because I would want to hear you too. And you can ask your questions. Even if I can't hear you, use the private chat uh, chat corner and ask your question because I would uh, because I want to know that I have reached you. Anyone out there? As I wait for your questions, I will be talking a bit to myself about the tragedy of something called. Thank you, thank you, Wahome. Thank you, Daktari. Daktari, if you are out there, Asante Sana, that you're out there, you can hear me. I can't hear anything. I'm actually in total silence. Thank you, Dr. Ohome. Uh, I'm, 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 very, I'm, I'm very happy to know that you had the time to listen to this. Um, I also saw, I also saw uh, Catherine, um, Catherine Njore, you and Chris, you have also commented. If anybody has any question, please then ask me on this uh, chat, on this chat, uh, chat part. Uh, then I can answer if you have any specific question. But I wanted, as I'm waiting for your questions, uh, to say something about the famous useless uh, condom. Condoms have been there from 1350. 1350, uh, during the time when the first, when the name condom uh, was created but remember before that time before europe was known in the ancient egyptian times there were they had a clothing they used to make because of the pride of the black race they used to have a cloth which they used to wear on the male organ as he walked and did his work he was not walking around with his organs exposed exposed uh, to the weather there was dressing and if you are though for those who are very rich they as were decorated with the expensive things like gold like silver like other things and they would have a big dressing thing for their uh, for their for their for their private parts and this is what finally was uh, used the, 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 this mindset, like most other things that came from Africa, and the ancient Egypt is ancient, the great pyramids, they were there before anything written was written. Nobody knew who created them, who made them. But one thing we know, they were made by black people of that time because the white men did not even exist. They were not known. They did not have, they had not made anything. The condoms, 1360, uh, uh, the first known or when one of the uh, people in royalty wanted to be in, to have infidelity and did not want to sire children outside and talked about the lamp, the lamp intestines and he was wearing them as he is meeting uh, his, uh, his other, uh, his other, uh, in, in his infidelity out there. What, why I'm going to 1350 is this, because in 1930, Goodyear and the Koch vulcanized rubber. Take this date, 1930, the two names, Goodyear and the, and the Clark. Both of them, people working with the rubber vulcanized it into very small, in, into very thin layers that could be used to manufacture to, to, to manufacture condoms as we, we know them. 
the condom has continued to be made to be made more sophisticated with more material and even though 1930 rubber condoms were already there they were not working in preventing conception and that is the reason why hormones which are very dangerous were manufactured in the 1960s because all of you should ask yourself because condoms were there and iud's coils were there by that time why did you need to manufacture very dangerous things in the 1960s if what you wanted to do was just to to to, to, to uh, bad control it is because the condoms were not working and they were not working for these reasons because the way condoms are structured they cannot stop conception when a woman is fertile of course a woman is only fertile two percent of her whole life 98 percent of her whole life she cannot conceive she is infertile god made a woman nearly always infertile except a small window two percent of her life when she becomes fertile and during that fertility nothing will stop her from becoming fertile debbie oxford hello yes i've I been see speaking you. with jeffrey i see you welcome don't get lost on me debbie i can see you so talk can't hear you I can't hear Debbie. There we go. You should be able to hear me now. Now I can hear you. Yes. Jeffrey yes. has asked me to come on and say a few closing remarks on his behalf. When you're ready to close, just let me know. You go ahead and speak, though. Now, first of all, coordinate the questions. Debbie, coordinate the questions. Are there any questions out there? I would wish to answer a question or two. Hey, I'm not seeing the chat. Oh, I, on your right, you should see where it says private chat. And next to it, it says comments. If you click yes. where it says comments, it'll give yeah. you a list of what everybody's commenting. And there are some questions in there you might want to answer. I uh, Let me. Oh, OK. Now I see. Now, why didn't you come earlier? <laughs> now, you are here. <laughs> <laughs> now you 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 becoming early now i'll start with a question by sister rosa sister rosa rukunga christian even when women get infection most of those doctors will not even remove it i have met a few women with this complaint and her won't remove it you talking about the coil and i want to repeat it again you can never treat a woman with a genital infection with the coil in situ the first thing you do you remove the coil and treat her and throw it away and next time advise her that one of the greatest things that caused her infection was the coil if she wants it another time at least she would come to me because i will not put it but if she comes back to you because you like exploiting women then you can put it but a simpler advice from me is this every woman with a coil go remove the demon christine Mbueria, you say you say they keep treating over and over without much relief correct Massey george and chat why most guys encourage women to put them it is because it's a business and they are making business they are not gynecologists they are business people putting this thing in women is not gynecology this thing can be put by even the taxi drivers and the thugs in town. This is just something that you put in the womb and anybody can do that. 
a doctor must not debase themselves a nurse must not debase themselves to the level of inserting a deadly thing a dirty thing something into the womb of a woman from that time you become exo hippocratic you are no longer working according to the hippocratic oath any person putting them on they have excommunicated themselves from the community of true medical people they are in fact thugs wearing medical clothes christian beria now kenya for ethics and moral all your questions shall be responded NAP can also be practiced as a good option instead of now somebody is talking about natural family planning i don't like that word at all myself i like fertility awareness because it is not about planning things it's about knowing how your body works and using it to space your children or to get your children when you want and the next talk i will give either on this platform or any other platform will be how to do it because this is knowledge every girl should have from when they reach maturity because it is part of their life it is part of womanhood it is part of embracing themselves as women that is the knowledge when you baptize it natural family planning then in a way you are also giving it giving it in a giving it a very rude name are you putting it on the same on the same corridor with the, with, the, with, the, with these other contraceptives is it coming to, to to is it coming to compete with them no fertility awareness is just like learning every other thing about our, our bodies and every girl should be taught this from as young as possible so that crazy resists do not come and say just because they do not know how their body works then you can be able now to teach them about contraceptives and also remind, remind them that the parents are doing nothing it is not true its society has lost a lot because they have been shouted down by evil people and kept quiet even good good men and good women have kept quiet because of fear the fear must dissipate now that we shall teach in our next talk where is the doctor located i think you will be told now if a couple that the best way forward for this current generation this current generation are our children they are our brothers and sisters and we must help them to know the truth and when they know the truth their way will be clear i have told you the untold stories about contraceptives for one reason only because from now when you use them do not use them because you do not know that they are evil you do not use them but do not use them and still say that you do not know they are resist gadgets do not use them and at the same time know that they are demonic because that is what they are and especially if you are a christian and you are using them shame on you now we can close it's going to it's long past closing time now <laughs> debbie oxford of usa how is usa um we're okay i think we're in, i think we're in a better situation than Africa, uh, but yeah, the COVID virus is still widespread here. Don't worry about COVID. Wear your mask and do not stay and keep distance. But I, but there is something that, um, now I'm talking absolutely as an African doctor who is, who is completely Christian, that elections are coming in your country soon. Yes. I will send to you, Debbie, because now I can see you. I'll send you. I have I have a vote. I'll send it to you. Please vote Republican. I always vote Republican. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I Thank do you. not like baby killers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Yes. Now I wish to I we can we can close this and I wish to say for those of you who have who have listened to me on this monologue, I couldn't hear anybody. Now I can see and talk to Debbie. <laughs> I want to say you, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you because 
The things I've talked about today are difficult things. They are difficult things and they are deep things. But if I don't tell them, I promise you, you will not be told. Be told. And a lot of us are so polite, they will not tell you the truth. But for me, unfortunately, I have seen so much suffering. I've seen so much death. I've seen so much suffering. I've seen so much exploitation by people who are killers. And it is my time to blow the whistle. And if Debbie is out there, she is hearing this from America, then we are hearing from each other. Thank you very much, each one of them. Debbie, take over. Doctor, I really appreciate you coming on tonight and talking to everybody and giving us this good information. I really think that people really need to take a hold of this and to spread the word to other people and to get them on board too with, with telling their friends and family about these dangers. Um, I know that our host was really disappointed to not be able to be on the show with us tonight. And I want to give you my apologies from him, both to you, doctor, and to our audience. I just really appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for staying with us. I know we've gone over. I want to say good night now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I don't know how to turn it off, though. <laughs> I, I, I will I look around here, yes, I think it is.